I moved to LA to be a Laker girl. Never ever in my life did I think I would be here. On offense, set oh, into wow. the barricade! I had such a chip on my shoulder when I debuted because I was the last draft pick. It fled a fire inside me and proved what I was capable of. Right. The Princess of Staten Island, look at this! Carmel under the coat of silence. The first character I came up with was a Princess of Staten Island, and that's still who I am 11 years later. <laughs> I love being a heel. Is it more fun being a heel? Yes, so much more. Have you been thinking about a WWE return yet? I would love to return. It was a big deal when you beat Oscar. Beat Oscar, I beat Charlotte. Carmella is champion! Twice. Look at this, this is very intimate. This is, did you, what did you bring up here? Oh, this is um, a Prosecco, because very we're nice. at a winery, and so why not? And I don't have my baby with me today, so <laughs> I'm just gonna enjoy the day. How's mom life treating you? It's the best, the absolute best. I truly, it's my favorite thing in the world is being a mom. 60 hours of labor, is that right? Yes, yeah, 60, six, six zero. zero, six zero. That's a long time for those of you who have never been in labor, that's a long time. It's just a long time period. Yes. How, how does it become 60 hours? <sighs> that's a great question. <laughs> it was just such a long, long experience and it was, Honestly, just very defeating because I spent my entire pregnancy preparing for labor and delivery. I feel like as a WWE superstar, I'm used to being in pain. I'm used to, I feel like I have a pretty high pain tolerance. So I just could not wait to get into labor and like deliver this baby and call it a day. And I did all of the preparations, took the classes. I exercised every single day in my pregnancy. And then when it came time to have the baby, it just didn't go the way I planned. And it just took so long and it felt like it was never ending. And, um, but ultimately at the end of the day, everyone was healthy. So that's all that matters. A happy, healthy baby boy, yes. Dimitri. Dimitri. H how old is he now? He's four months. Oh my gosh. I know, I can't believe it. He's just the cutest. What's Corey Graves like as a dad? <laughs> He is the best dad. I'm so impressed. I mean, he has three kids. I have three stepkids. So obviously I know of him as a great father to them, but I've never seen him as a father to a baby and to a newborn. And he is just, it's, it'll melt your heart. If I told you the things I see him do with this, you would never believe it because Corey Graves is, we all know Corey Graves. But uh, as a dad, he's just the sweetest. Tell us one. Just one. Oh my gosh. I mean, <laughs> so our son is obsessed with Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and there's this little dance called the hot dog dance and Goofy does this move and he will be in our living room. Corey does this move with as, the, as Goofy doing the hot dog dance and it is the funniest thing. You would never in your life picture this, but it is so funny and it's so cute. Does Dimitri hear dad's voice on TV and like kind of look around? So I've tried that and we'll watch SmackDown on Friday nights and I've tried, but I don't, I don't think he quite Not yet. gets that. Not yet. yet. Yeah. Have you been thinking about a WWE return yet? Oh, I would love to return. I mean, I'm, obviously I'm so immersed in this motherhood world right now, but um, Honestly, I actually have an injury from delivery, so I have a lot of nerve damage that happened, and uh, my foot is kind of non-functional right now, so uh, it's something that I never knew could happen during labor wow. and delivery, but I have two herniated discs in my back, and that's um, correlated to my foot. So I, I haven't even been able to work out, haven't been able to do anything that will get me back to the ring quite yet. Um, ho hopefully eventually I'll get there, but right now I'm just kind of working. I'm gonna go be in physical therapy and things like that too. I mean, I've been wrestling for 11 years. I've never been injured, knock on wood, and now here I have a baby and I'm going to physical therapy. So I don't know how that works out, but here we go. I totally thought you were gonna say <laughs> the injury was you know, a nagging injury from years in the ring. <laughs> nope, just from a 60 hour labor. <laughs> Well, you know. <laughs> yes, so here we are. <laughs> when we look back at your career, there's been some amazing moments. Let's talk about the Money in the Bank cash -in. Sure. My favorite part about that is the very high-pitched yells at referee <laughs> Mike Chioda. I feel like he wasn't doing this as quickly as maybe he could have been. Yeah, I mean, I guess that was all part of the plan, you know, and I knew that he was going to give me a hard time 
with it, but I didn't know he was going to give me that hard of a time. I was like, okay, how many more times am I going to tell you to cash this damn thing in? Like, let's go. But um, watching back, I mean, it's hilarious. And I just, I love him so much. He's such an, uh, so awesome. So it's just funny to have that memory with him. It's like, these are like high pitched, like. Yes. I mean, and I just sprinted down the ramp. And of course, my adrenaline, everything, I'm so excited because I know I'm about to cash in and hopefully win this title. So I, I mean, I was just like, how, how much longer can I sit here and scream? I was so out of breath. <laughs> It was ridiculous. What was your first memory of wrestling when you were growing up? Oh, um, I definitely remember watching with my dad. So my dad wrestled in the early 90s. And so he would work overnights. And we would record Monday Night Raw on our VCR, if anyone here knows what a VCR is. So we'd record it. And then we'd watch it when he got home from work the next day. And I just I remember being so obsessed with Miss Elizabeth. I just thought she was so classy, she was so fabulous. I was enamored with her. I just thought she was amazing. And um, actually, Corey <laughs> makes fun of me because another, one of my favorites was one, two, three kid. <laughs> and he was my first crush in wrestling. <laughs> What's wrong I with that? that? I know, but he makes fun of me. It's and a Hall of Famer. Like, right? And it's, it's just so funny. So Miss Elizabeth and one, two, three kid were my favorite. Were you an X Pac fan too, or just a one, two, three kid? Just one, two, three kid. I, I that was just the per- period of time that I was watching and just thought, you know, he was the best. Your dad wasn't like just a wrestler in the '90s, like that. You kind of just skipped over that. Your dad had like Razor Ramon's yeah, first WWF yep. match. Yes. He had. He was in there with a lot of big people. Yeah, a lot of big names. It's really cool. I, I mean, in third grade, I would bring WWF magazine to school and be like, "This is my dad," and everyone thought that was really just so cool. And I just, it's awesome that we're able to have that bond and share the share this together. What matches of his do you remember when you were a kid? I honestly don't remember watching them as a kid. I feel like there's not like a I remember watching his boxing, like he did a lot of boxing as well. So I remember going to his boxing matches and having a lollipop in the crowd and things like that. But I don't remember specifically sitting there watching his matches, but watching them back now, it's just so cool to see him in there with so many big names. Did you think, my dad did this, this is something I could do one day? Never. Never, ever in my life did I think I would be here. Uh, I love performing. I love, I mean, I was a dancer my whole life. I'd shared in the NFL, NBA, and then when this opportunity presented itself, I just felt like, sure, let me try it, you know? I, I don't know if I can do it. I've always been a small girl, so I never thought it was something that I could do. Um, and then I went to the tryout, and I just fell in love with it. And of course, with my history of watching it, I, I knew what it was all about. Um, so it's just kind of, it's cool that it all came full circle, especially with my dad's history, my love of performing, and, you know, let me to where I'm at. We'll get back to the interview in just a second, but I made a little bit of money betting on King of the Ring on my bookie. So I said Gunther was going to be King of the Ring, Nia Jax, Queen of the Ring. I think we all knew this, but Cody beating Logan, I put money on that. I mean, I said Becky Lynch was going to retain against Liv Morgan, but I mean, we don't really need to talk about that one. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, you can bet on WWE PLEs at my bookie. Clash of the Castle is just a few weeks away, and the betting line's not out just yet. It'll be out like a few days before when the card is officially announced. But sign up now, use my code CVV, and you'll get a 50% bonus on your first deposit. And since I know a lot of you are also UFC fans, check out the odds they have right now for Conor McGregor versus Mike. Michael Chandler at UFC 303. McGregor, the slight underdog here. WWE, UFC, boxing, baseball, basketball, you name it. You can bet on it at my bookie and use my promo code CVV for that 50% welcome bonus when you sign up. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. You had a moment, right, where it was, you had to choose between trying out for WWE and the Lakers, right? Being a Lakers girl? How do you decide there? So I was a Laker girl, and I had found out about an opportunity to try out for Tough Enough. And I was making it to, I just kind of did like a video submission, I think, or something like that. I was emailing with somebody, and they had said what the commitment would be for Tough Enough, and I knew I wouldn't be able to do it because I'd already committed to Laker girls. I couldn't do both. So I thought, well, I moved to L.A. to be a Laker girl. I'm here on the squad, and let me... I need to finish my commitment with this. And then I just never thought again about WWE until this opportunity came about. And, you know, it's great. It ended up working out. It worked out great. And (laughs) NXT, I I feel like that's like when people really got enamored with you. That's when you really endeared yourself to the audience. What was it about NXT that was so special for you? 
I I think back on that time when I just loved my time in NXT so much because I felt like at that point in my life, it was, what am I doing with my life? I had no idea what my next step would be. I had done the Patriots, I'd done the Lakers, and I didn't know what my next step would be. And so being in NXT and getting the opportunity to create this Carmella character, I'm just so grateful for. I felt like... I knew I wanted to have a strong character because I didn't come from the independents. I didn't have any experience in wrestling. So I knew for me, with my love of performing, I needed to create a strong character. And I felt like I really did that. And I never really had a character change. It was the first character I came up with was the Princess of Staten Island. And that's still who I am 11 years later. So I'm so grateful that I created such a strong character and really came into my own. And afforded, it afforded me the opportunity, especially when you know Enzo and Cass went up to Raw and I stayed in NXT, of course I was devastated because I felt like, you know, I wanted to be on Raw, I wanted to be on the main roster, and then I was held back, and I, it all worked out the way it was supposed to because I was able to find out who I was on my own. When they got called up, was there ever talk of you joining them and then it changed the last minute? No, uh, it was, we were at WrestleMania, I think it was, I'm so bad, 31 or 31 was in Texas? 32 is 32 in Texas. Is in Texas. Yeah. And um, I guess Triple H had talked to Enzo and Cass separately and told them they were debuting the next night on Raw. And there were talks about it because we had done tours together. We had done loops um, and I was with them. So I thought, okay, well, when they go up, of course I'm going up with them. So when I found out that he at Triple H had talked to them and they came and pulled me, someone came and pulled me off the bus. We were about to leave. Um, it was takeover, I think, or I don't even remember what we were doing, but I was pulled off the bus. We we're about to head back to the hotel. And like, Triple H wants to talk to you. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> we're debuting tomorrow. I was so excited. And he pulled me in, he's like, Enzo and Cass are debuting tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, you're not gonna debut with them. And I was like, oh. Like my world just came crashing down. I was devastated in the moment. But now I look back and he had told me, you know, this is a, a good opportunity for you to prove who you are on your, on, your, on your own. You're strong, you're gonna be a strong character. You don't need to be with them. You're gonna be strong on your own. And at the time, of course, it was devastating to hear, but it all worked out, I think, the way it's supposed to. And, you know, here I am, 11 years later, still here and killing it. I mean, not right now, but, you know. But soon? Soon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you were able to go out then on your own in NXT, and that's when you really started to make the real memories for your character in NXT. What are the things that really stand out for you from that time? I think, um, you know, I had a match with Bailey, and it was I won a, the Battle Royal and to become the number one contender, and I had a match against Bailey for the NXT Women's Championship, and I just felt like it was an opportunity for me to show who I was beyond being just a manager, because that's kind of all I did, and. I showed up and I showed out, and I'm just so proud of that, and I'm so grateful for Bailey to this day for allowing me the opportunity to show what I can do, and I felt like that op like showed you know who I was and what I was capable of, that I was more than just like a hype girl. It was a big deal when you beat Asuka, like a huge deal. <laughs> like that's, that's a big thing. Yeah, I mean, I beat Asuka, I beat Charlotte, I don't know, and twice. The, the list goes on and on <laughs> and on, but, the, but, but you got beat by Marshmallow. Marshmallow. Oh, I did for the 24-7. I forgot about that. I mean, that 24-7 time, that was that was a wild, wild time. Let's talk about it because <laughs> so much happened with that with the 24-7 championship and everything going. Yes, please take a sip here. Is it good? It's so good. Is everyone having a drink out here? Oh, yeah, cheers, okay. guys. Yes, cheers. What were some of your favorite parts of the 24-7 championship? I just loved being paired with R-Truth. He is such a treasure and he he's such a good person and so fun to be around and we just had it was just full-on shenanigans all the time whether the cameras were rolling or they weren't and we just always had fun ideas we would ad lib things that weren't in the script and it was just fun to play off each other in that aspect and i just feel like you just never knew what to expect and people were looking forward to seeing what we were going to do you know we're in costumes and disguises and just getting into the most ridiculous situations and i just loved being you know that that entertainment part of the show rather than then going out. I had already at that point been women's champion. I showed what I can do in the ring. Let me show what I can do with my character and be fun and be silly and have comedic timing and play off somebody. And I think to be able to have that range is so important. Not everyone can do that. And I'm so grateful that I was afforded the opportunity to show that side of my character, especially alongside our truth.
How many times did you set something up with our truth and while you guys were live, it just completely changed in the moment? I mean, all the time. Because he would say something that he knew would make me laugh and I would be reacting just like, I mean, and the cameras are on, so you can't restart. You can't, you know, you have to just react on the fly. But I just think we had such great chemistry. We were able to do that. What would you say to the version of you that was debuting, knowing what you know now, What's the advice you would give to that version of you? I would just tell her, you're going to do everything that you set out to do and then some. And I, I had such a chip on my shoulder when I debuted because I was the last draft pick. And I knew they were kind of like, oh, she's just kind of an afterthought. Like, we'll, we'll, we're going to debut her just to get rid of her from NXT. And I'm not saying this is what was said to me, but this is just how, how I felt. Yeah. And I was like, OK, we'll see what happens. And uh, I just it fled a, a fire inside me. And I think. Um, you know, I really proved what I was capable of. I mean, and you earned it, right? Yeah. You earned it. We'll get back to the conversation in just a second, but if you've been listening to the audio version of the podcast on Apple or Spotify, you know that I recently got back into the hobby of collecting sports cards. Got quite a few wrestling cards here, but one of the tough things about ripping packs is there's zero transparency on what's actually available. Like, you don't know what the hit rates are. It's really just a shot in the dark. That all changes with slab packs from arenaclub.com. It's the only repack that provides real value, a complete view of all possible cards, and clear hit rates for each one. So when I buy slab packs on Arena Club, I finally feel like I know what I'm getting. So check this out. about the football slab pack with three cards inside. The very first one, look at that, boom. Joey Cool, Joe Burrow's rookie card, and it's a perfect 10 gem mint. After your pulls are revealed, they're immediately placed in your vault for safekeeping or for trading and selling, and you can have them officially graded by Arena Club, like my perfect 10 gem mint. Arena Club slab packs are revolutionizing the repack game with their transparency, and right now they're hooking you up. When you go to arenaclub.com slash CVV, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So if that's a $400 slab pack, boom, that's 40 bucks right back in your pocket when you go to arenaclub.com slash CVV, 10% off your first purchase. How did you start to prove yourself? I, I worked so hard, I really did. And there were so many things that I did behind the scenes. You know, you, you stay late, you watch the matches, you study. And for me, I, I just really wanted, I think I really committed to being a heel. Like I, I, everyone wants to be liked, I felt like, especially at that time. And I was not afraid to be hated. I wanted to be hated. I mean, when I first debuted, I was actually a baby face and then they turned me, right after SummerSlam when Nikki Bella debuted, they swapped us. And to me, I was like, here we go. Like, I remember when I turned on her, I came back through the curtain and I was told, there you are. Now now you're Carmella, you're in this role. And I'm like, yes, this is where I feel comfortable. I feel, I just, I love being a heel and I like to fully commit to that. And I think that's what has helped my career so much because I don't mind being hated. <laughs> is it more fun being a heel? Oh my God, yes, <laughs> so much more fun. I mean, you, know, you seem so nice in real life, it seems like it's hard to turn it on and just be Oh, a I can turn it on at the snap of a finger, the drop of a dime. I just, especially because I know Carmela so well, I created this character. I feel so near and dear and close to this character. So I can just turn it on. And I think because I, I like to consider myself a pretty nice, decent human being in real life that, you know, sometimes these things like really piss me off and I just hold them in. And then when it's time to be Carmela, it all comes out. <laughs> when you returned in 2023, I felt like it was a slightly different version of you. Yeah. Well, how would you describe th that version of Carmela that we saw? I felt like that was... <sighs> who I wanted Carmella to be. So when I first debuted, I loved it, you know, being the moonwalk and trash talking princess of Staten Island. That was and good. I just, I loved it, all of that. And then I kind of transi transitioned into that, you know, the Tradice Carmella, where, you know, I had the curtain and the champagne and the sommelier, and that's not necessarily what I wanted to do, but it's what I had to do. And then it turned into the most beautiful woman, which is another thing that I wasn't really that fond of, but, you gotta do what you gotta do, wear the mask and all this stuff. So when I came back, I was like, can I please just be who I wanna be? Please let me return to being the Princess of Staten Island, the moonwalking, trash talking Princess of Staten Island, but a little elevated. And that's what I did. And I was so excited to get into that role. And I think I was just cooking with gas, you know, Elimination Chamber. I, it was so much fun. And then 
I got pregnant. <laughs> Some great news. Yeah. And then so it is what it is. But I felt like that was really, I was just really excited to return to my roots and be that Carmela again. There was something, though, about you wearing the mask that made it very easy to not like you. Oh, yeah. I mean, again, I, I fully commit. If it's something that's given to me, I'm not going to take it and you know, just do it halfway. I'm going to take something yeah. and go all the way with it. And I think that's what I did. I mean, I'll make anything work. You put me with James El Ellsworth. You put me with our truth You give me a mask. You want to make me have a sommelier. Great. Let me, whatever it is you're going to give me, yeah. I'm going to take and I'm going to do the, the most I can with it because there's no other choice. I don't like to do anything halfway. When you were with the Patriots, was Tom Brady on the team? Yes, he was. Did, did you have a, do you have any Tom Brady stories? I do. So it was um, Mr. Crafts, I think it was his 60th wedding anniversary, and it was at Gillette Stadium, and they had some cheerleaders there to welcome the guests, and he walked in with Giselle, and I mean, Giselle, come on. I mean, there's Tom Brady, who's, you know, he's the goat, but like, Giselle is ugh, stunning. So when they walked by, I, I, I needed to say something. I was like, hi, how are you? And she's like, good, how are you? And I'm like, oh, my God, I love you. And he was so kind and fine and, like, very nice. But, like, I didn't really care about him. I cared more about Giselle. <laughs> and when you were with the Lakers, was Kobe on the team? He was. Look at you, just he surrounded was. by legends. I mean, you know. Wow. I'm very lucky. I feel very great to have cheered for the NFL and cheer for – the Patriots when Brady was on the team and cheer for the Lakers when Kobe. I mean, you can't really get any better than that. <laughs> Amazing. So what are you up to these days? Well, of course, I'm being a mom, and I just absolutely love being a mom. Uh, but something I've been working on recently, or not even recently throughout the pregnancy, um, that I'm going to be launching soon is uh, a platform for women where we talk and normalize a lot of things that have to do with fertility and pregnancy and postpartum. I feel, uh, you know, my experience with the miscarriages that I had prior to getting pregnant with my son, um, I really just felt like, especially with the platform that WWE has given me with my social media and being able to be open and transparent with everything that had happened, you know, I felt like it was really helping a lot of women. And so many women came out of the woodwork talking about, like even friends, coworkers in WWE that I didn't even know had experienced miscarriages. And they said, oh my gosh, like how did you get through that? You're so open about it. That happened to me, but I didn't want to tell anyone. And I just felt like, okay, I'm onto something here. I think it's really important to especially with the platform, talk about these things and normalize them and help so many women to feel better about themselves with motherhood. I mean, being a mom now, I'm four months postpartum, and it's like this club that you don't know about until you're in it, right? As you as a new dad, it's just a different world. And for women especially, there's so many changes that we go through and that happen, and I think it's important to talk about it. So I'll be launching something soon, so just keep your eyes open for that. I'm really excited for it. Well, congrats on that. Congrats on, on being a mom. Thank you. I'll end this with the question that I ask everyone at the okay. end of every conversation. Gratitude's such a big part of my life. What are three things in your life, Carmela, that you're grateful for oh right now? Gratitude is, I always say, if I woke up today with only the things I was grateful for yesterday, what would I have? Mm. I think it's so important to practice gratitude. I would say my family, number one, my health, and, um, ooh, what's the third thing? I'm going to say some wine. There we go. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. You're amazing. Give it up, please, Thanks, for Carmela, and yes, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>